Today we are going to talk about the basics of pharmacology, especially in context of anesthesia. We will be focusing on two main ideas or principles. These are pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. So when we give a drug to a patient, several things happen to the drug. These include how the drug is being absorbed from the site of administration, how it is distributed from the blood to the other parts of the body, how it is metabolized, and finally how it is eliminated. Together we call these processes pharmacokinetics. Understanding pharmacokinetics is important because it helps us know how long a drug will stay in our blood or for how long it will work. In simple terms, pharmacokinetics describes what our body does to the drug. As the drug moves through the body, it interacts with specific receptors located in various tissues and organs. When the drug binds to these receptors, it triggers its intended effects such as causing pain relief or sedation. This process is referred to as pharmacodynamics, which describes what the drug does to our body. Let's look into the pharmacokinetic principles first. Once again, pharmacokinetics is the study of drug movement in, through and out of the body. It is the study of processes by which a drug is absorbed, distributed, metabolized and eliminated by the body. These four processes explain how the drug levels in the blood change over time. Let's start with absorption. Absorption is the process by which a drug enters the bloodstream from the site of administration. The way a drug is administered impacts how well it is absorbed. For example, an intravenous injection goes straight into your blood while the oral medication has to dissolve in your stomach first. So let us look into some roots of drug administration and how it affects absorption. Oral drugs are by far the most prescribed method of drug administration. When a drug is taken orally, it enters the digestive system. In the stomach, the drug must dissolve in gastric fluids. This process is influenced by drug's formulation and stomach's pH level. Once dissolved, the drug moves into small intestine, which is the primary site of absorption due to its large surface area and rich blood supply. The drug then passes through the intestinal wall and into the blood vessels. From there, it travels through the hepatic portal vein directly to the liver. This phase is known as fast pass metabolism. In the liver, a portion of drug is metabolized or broken down by liver enzymes which can significantly reduce the amount of active drug. Once the drug leaves the liver, it enters the inferior vena cava which carries it to the heart. The heart then pumps the drug into the systemic circulation, distributing it throughout the body. During this entire process, the proportion of administered drug that reaches the systemic circulation in an active form is reduced. The concept of bioavailability describes this reduction in the proportion of drug that reaches the systemic circulation. Most drugs outside anesthesia are taken orally, so the oral drugs like tablets or liquids have complex absorption behavior due to factors like stomach pH, presence of food and fast pass metabolism. However, in anesthesia practice, most drugs are administered intravenously. For IV drugs, Absorption as traditionally defined does not apply because these drugs are administered directly into the bloodstream by passing barriers that influence drug absorption. Since IV administration results in an immediate entry of drug into the heart and then to the systemic circulation, this leads to 100% bioavailability, meaning the entire dose reaches the bloodstream. 
One of the main drug used in anesthesia practice are local anesthetics. They are used for skin and tissue infiltration, peripheral nerve blocks, and in neuraxial anesthesia. When a local anesthetic is injected into the skin or tissues, it diffuses through the tissue until it reaches the nerve fibers where it blocks the nerve impulse generation. In contrast to oral drugs, absorption of local anesthetics from the site of administration is responsible for the offset of its action. Highly vascular areas such as muscle or mucosal tissues results in faster absorption compared to lesser vascular tissues like adipose tissues. The chemical properties of local anesthetics like lipid solubility, dissociation constant and use of additives like epinephrine also influence the absorption of local anesthetics. We won't be discussing these properties here though. Likewise, in peripheral nerve blocks, local anesthetic is injected near the target nerve or nerves. Same factors determine the absorption of local anesthetics which is responsible for the offset of its action. Similarly, epidural and spinal anesthesia results from the interaction of local anesthetics with the nerve structures primarily of those located within the subarachnoid space. As the medication is absorbed into the blood stream and cleared from the spinal fluid or epidural fat, sensory and motor functions return. Transdermal and transmucosal absorption also bypasses GI tract, allowing medication to enter the systemic circulation directly through the skin or mucous membranes. The skin by design presents a considerable barrier to absorption and typically several hours are required for the clinical effect to commence following transdermal drug delivery. The drug must penetrate all the layers of skin to reach the capillaries where it is absorbed into the systemic circulation. The blood flow to the skin is also less compared to the muscles resulting in prolonged absorption. And owing to its large surface area, the skin provides a depot of drugs resulting in continuous drug delivery for a prolonged period of time. Several factors affect transdermal drug absorption. Smaller lipid-soluble molecules penetrate the skin more easily. Healthy, hydrated skin absorbs the drug better than dry or damaged skin and of course, higher drug concentration improves absorption. Transmucosal absorption refers to the absorption of drug from the mucous membranes such as those in our mouth like buccal and sublingual, nasal passages, rectum and vaginal areas. Transmucosal delivery is characterized by a much more rapid absorption compared to transdermal delivery owing to a high mucosal blood flow. The drug diffuses through the mucosal epithelium which is also thinner and more permeable than skin. Such drugs need to be non-ionized or lipophilic to efficiently pass through the mucosal membrane. I must say that subcutaneous and intramuscular roots follow the same principle of absorption as that of transdermal and transmucosal drug delivery respectively. Inhaled anesthetics are among the most commonly used anesthetic agents in clinical practice due to their rapid onset, ease of administration and the ability to control the depth of anesthesia. They are absorbed through the lungs very rapidly. After administration, anesthetic diffuses from the alveoli into the pulmonary capillaries and then into the bloodstream. The driving force for this diffusion is the partial pressure gradient between the anesthetic in the alveoli and in the blood. The quantity of anesthetic taken up depends upon its solubility in blood and upon the pulmonary capillary blood flow. Once in the bloodstream, these agents are transported to the brain where they exert their anesthetic effects. The roots of drug absorption that we discussed earlier requires that the drug crosses biological membrane or cell membrane before it gets into the blood. 
This in short is called membrane transfer. Membrane transfer also applies to other pharmacokinetic principles of distribution, metabolism and elimination as all these processes rely on the drug being transferred between tissues or cells. There are several ways for a drug to move across the biological membranes. They are passive transport, carrier mediated transport and filtration. There are others too but I think these three are the main ways. Passive transport is the transfer of drug across a membrane without the use of energy. It follows a concentration gradient meaning that the drug moves from the area of higher concentration to the area of lower concentration. Simple diffusion is a form of passive transport where the lipid soluble drugs can pass directly through the lipid bilayer of cell membrane. It works best for small non-polar non or lipid soluble drugs because they can easily pass through the fatty layers of the membrane. Carrier mediated transport of drugs involves proteins in the membrane that help drug cross. There are two main types, facilitated diffusion and active transport. In facilitated diffusion, the drug binds to a carrier protein which helps it cross the membrane. Like passive diffusion, the process does not require energy and moves the drug from a high to low concentration. It is used by water-soluble polar drugs that are too large to pass directly through the lipid bilayer. In contrast to facilitated diffusion, Active transport requires energy usually from ATP because the proteins move drug against the concentration gradient. This is how certain drugs such as those that resemble essential nutrients like vitamins and amino acids are absorbed into the cells. Lastly, filtration is the movement of drugs through a small pores or spaces between the cells known as paracellular spaces. This typically happens in capillaries where a pressure gradient pushes small molecules through. Only small water-soluble drugs can pass through these pores as they are too tiny for larger molecules. The kidneys rely on filtration to remove drugs from the blood during excretion. We can appreciate membrane transport as we learn about drug solubility in blood or protein and in fat when we learn about distribution, metabolism and elimination pathway of pharmacokinetic principle. For now, let's keep note of the properties of drugs like lipid solubility, water solubility, size of the drug molecule and drug concentration gradient. In our next video, we'll discuss about distribution of drug from blood to the other parts of the body. Thank you.